Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Thomas More Newman Center. We're a ministry of the Paulist Fathers. We're so glad to see you here today for this uh, Ash Wednesday, the beginning of the season of Lent. Um, a few notes for those of you who maybe haven't been here before uh, during this time of COVID or maybe are back after an absence. Uh, please leave your mask on at all times. No eating or drinking in the building at this time. Uh, so if you have a water bottle or something and you need to get a drink, please step outside. Uh, second, we invite you to sing and proclaim loudly with your hearts, but very softly with your lips. Since we're all sharing the air, we want to spread as few uh, aerosol particles as possible. And uh, third, we are not um, going to be passing the basket at this time because of obvious reasons. But if you want to make a contribution to the Newman Center, there is a large basket in the very center of our worship space. And we do appreciate your support for our mission. Let's rise and begin this time together. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends in faith, today we begin our Lenten journey, our period of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving to prepare ourselves to celebrate the resurrection of Christ at Easter. So let us pray that this may be a fruitful season for us a season of growth that we grow closer to God in our time of penance. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, Gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. 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 Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion, blot out my offense. Oh, wash me more and more from my guilt and my sorrow and cleanse me from all of my sin. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. My offenses, truly I know them, and my sins are always before me. Against you alone have I sinned, O Lord. What is evil in your sight I have done? Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Put your steadfast spirit in my soul. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your spirit from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. 
A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I heard you. And on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. to me the joy of your salvation. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. 
This is one of the classic invocations that we use on Ash Wednesday during the imposition of ashes. And we remind ourselves of this, not to be morbid. But it seems that especially this year, we don't need a reminder of death. That unfortunately, death has been especially prevalent in our culture and in our world. Almost 500,000 people have died in America from COVID, which start, started almost a year ago. Over 2.4 million have died. And this is just from COVID. This isn't all the deaths in the world. It seems that death is in the forefront of our culture all of a sudden. And it's not a place that American culture typically wants it to be. And yet here we are, celebrating Ash Wednesday, reminding ourselves that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But we don't remind ourselves of this to be morbid. This isn't a, a dreary thought, but rather a realistic one, a reflection that death is part of the world, that death will happen. But as a Christian people, we have profound hope, profound knowledge that death is not the end. As we say at a funeral mass, life has changed, not ended. In Christ, our lives are transformed here and now, but they're also transformed in our death and in our eventual resurrection, when we will be raised to new life, when we will be brought to the new heavens and the new earth and spend a loving eternity with God. And so we remind ourselves that we are dust, not to be morbid, but to remember our identity as dust, that who we are as Christians is to be like Christ. And Christ died to himself to live for others. And so we too remember that ourselves, that we find ways to die to ourselves, to put ourselves aside, so that we can live for others in the here and now, so that we can make the light of Christ shine all the more from our hearts and from our lives. And in doing so, we become what St. Paul describes as being ambassadors of Christ, that in dying for ourselves, we let Christ live all the more and we let that love and that light shine to others so that they can be transformed, so that they may know the love of Christ in their lives. So as we begin our Lenten journey today, I invite you to take a moment to pause and reflect upon how, how you die to yourself, how acts of penance help you to die to yourself, and how this calls us to conversion, to live outwardly for others, to live all the more for Christ being present in others. And take a moment to acknowledge that we're not perfect in this. We're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. But that's why we come before God in this moment to receive these ashes, to say that we are imperfect dust, but it is by God's love that we are transformed into something greater, to be sprinkled and shared with the world. Now, you may have heard this year that due to COVID, we can't do the ashes on your forehead, that we're not going to have the crosses on our forehead, but rather we're going to have sort of a dusting on top of our heads. So while less visible, it has a strong biblical image of putting on the ash, of putting on this sense of penance and putting on Christ himself as well. You might see the sprinkling of the ash today as burying yourself, as being buried so that you die to yourself, so as to live for Christ, so as to live for others. And as we reflect on this, this helps to shape us. And it helps to shape the whole world, especially as we hope and look forward to the end of this pandemic, that we can help shape a world that is not for ourselves, but for each other, to help shape a world that is full of charity, to help shape a world 
where we don't live just for ourselves, but we live outwardly for others in all that we do. Just as we are transformed by Christ, when we bear that transformation out in the world, the world itself becomes transformed. And we do this together. We do this with prayer, fasting, and almsgiving to prepare ourselves. But we also do it together as a community. We don't have to do it all by ourselves. But in the same way that Joel, our first reading today, called the congregation together, called the peoples together, we are called together by Christ to work together, to live together, to die to ourselves, to live for each other, and to live for those who are most in need so that we can change the world. So in receiving the ash today, we are reminded that we are dust, that we will die. But we focus more that we die to ourselves so that we live for others. That Christ who will raise us from the dead is already raising us to new life here and now, transforming us and calling us to share that love. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with abundance his great grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers And in your kindness, pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who will be marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Repent and believe in the gospel, knowing that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. To dust we return Sign us with ashes Merciful God Mark us and make us your own Sign us with ashes Merciful God Children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Mark us and make us your own. Surely you alone can save us. You pay our price with precious blood. Reaching through your great compassion, you lift us, your people, with love. Sign us with ashes, merciful God, Children of dust, as to dust we return. 
Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Mark us and make us your own. Surely you alone uphold us. You give us strength for all our needs. Shielding with a Father's favor, you bless us with pardon and peace. Sign us with ashes, merciful God, Children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Mark us and make us your own. Surely you alone can heal us. Yours is the will to make us whole. Soothing with a mother's kindness, the contrite of heart you console. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Mark us and make us your own. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Children of dust, as to dust we return. Sign us with ashes, merciful God. Mark us and make us your own. Mark us and make us your own. Let us stand. Let us pray that this season of Lent may be a wondrous opportunity to experience God's mercy, allowing us to turn from sin and grow in his love. that all members of the church, including those preparing for baptism or full communion in the Catholic Church, enter this sacred season with hearts open to conversion and aware of God's great mercy.
Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. That all the peoples of the world work to end violence and hatred, reaching out to all who are oppressed or displaced. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. That our Lenten prayer makes us mindful of God's gifts. Our Lenten fasting allows us to hunger for deeper communion with God and one another. And our Lenten almsgiving help us grow in service of those in need. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. That all seekers of truth, especially within the OSU academic community, find integrity in our religious devotion, allowing them to experience the power of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are seriously ill or hospitalized experience the healing presence of Christ, especially in those who minister to them. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us, aware of our frail mortality, also never forget our final destiny and the hope of eternal glory as we pray for all who have died this past year, especially those who have died young or tragically. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer that we take a moment of silence for all our prayers to echo within the heart of God. Let us pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. O God of all mercy, Hear our prayers as we begin this Lenten season. May our penance be fruitful and lead us to deeper conversion, that we may come to celebrate the fullness of Easter joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Our good and good of all is only church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, of the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Turn to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. 
Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Now the time of grace has come, the day of salvation. Come and learn now the way of our God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. I will take your heart of stone and place a heart within you, a heart of compassion and love. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. So a major part of our Lenten programming is always put on by CRS, Catholic Relief S Services. Of, we have several student ambassadors who are a part of that. And uh, you will have found the uh, rice bowls on your chairs when you came in. We invite you to take those home as a form of almsgiving to care for CRS and their programs. Uh, we invite everyone to grow in your faith and get involved at the Newman Center this Lent through our programming designed to help you with your journey of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Our Lenten offerings feature some special programming led by the CRS student ambassadors, including virtual simple solidarity meals. The first one will be this Sunday, February 21st. We'll also have virtual stations of the cross and much more. And please visit buckeyecatholic.com slash Lent for more info. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads down and pray for God's blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy, may, their, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. From ashes to the living fawn, your church must journey, Lord. Baptized in grace, in grace renewed by your most holy word. Through fasting, prayer, and charity, your voice speaks deep within, returning us to ways of truth and turning us from sin. When we repent, you run to us, forgiving arms spread wide. You celebrate when we return and come home to your side. From ashes to the living font, your church must journey still. Through cross and tomb to Easter joy, in spirit fire fulfilled.